Org charts provide helpful context and can help you diagnose problems in your business, but most people don't know how to build them. We're going to show you how to do it in a way that tells the story of your business and allows you to diagnose and fix structural problems. Most organizations grow organically, and as a result, the org structure is the end product of a long series of compromises most of which no one remembers why you did in the first place. Organization charts serve two critical functions. They help people understand lines of authority and decision-making responsibility, and they can be used to diagnose and fix structural problems in a business. But here's the problem. Most people just plunk boxes down on a piece of paper and call it done. So when you start, the first thing you want to do is take the names out of it, focus on functions, and then sequence them on the page in the same way that products and materials move through your business. You basically should scan from left to right the same way words on a page do. Who thinks up the products, who builds the products, who markets the products, who sells the products, and who supports the products after the sale. You're also going to have a corporate services group accounting and HR. But that's how it should scan from left to right across the page. That tells the story of your business. If you strip the names out and you focus on the functions, when you look at it, you're going to discover places where your structure has problems. Those problems fall into four main categories. First, you may discover gaps in your business model. Things have changed over time and you now need product management and it doesn't exist. Second, Span of control. No one should have more than five to seven direct reports, eight or nine at the outside. You'll note that from the CEO's perspective, the structure that I just outlined has seven direct reports. Product management, development, marketing, sales, support, HR, and accounting. Another thing that may come up as you look at the structure is ambiguity. This leads to unnecessary conflict, and you need to have clean lines of authority in the structure. The final problem that you'll find are power imbalances. As an organization grows organically, it may end up that one person has far too many things reporting into them. This is pretty typical. It's, not, it's really not unusual. Unfortunately, what happens is you end up with a situation where sales can steamroll development decisions based on the latest deal, or you can have a development organization that really isn't accountable to the market in terms of building what the market needs. So making sure that you've got a balance of power across the organization so the decisions reflect the needs of different constituencies is really important. When should you take a look at this tool? Well, at a minimum, you should be sitting down once a year with the entire management team and reviewing the structure. But you should also pull it out when you are having problems of ambiguity or someone is overloaded or you find that you've got a power imbalance. It's very helpful to be able to step back, look at it independent of the people and ask how should the business be functioning and then make sure that the structure is in alignment with that. So to recap, design your org chart independent of people. Lay it out in a way that tells the story of your business and then use that tool to diagnose problems in your structure and revisit it at least once a year to make sure that you've got the right structure. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, subscribe to this channel and if you've got a question for me that you'd love for me to address, put it in the comments.